But we want to turn our attention to Michigan, where a news conference getting, is getting underway in Kalamazoo County. Prosecutors are giving an update on the 2022 disappearance of a mother of eight children. 35-year-old Heather Kelly was last seen December 10th, 2022, with her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Carlos Watts. Her car was found with her blood on the front and back seats, but so far her remains have not been found. We'll bring you the news conference in just a moment, but here is a bit of a setup piece from our Scripps News affiliate, Kalamazoo reporter, Marissa Oberly. Federal court documents filed this week allege Kelly's boyfriend was involved in her disappearance and murder just hours before he escaped from a halfway house. That man, Carlos Watts Jr., does not currently face charges in her case, but the U.S. attorney's words on the eve of that scheduled announcement indicate that could soon change. In a previous interview with Fox 17, loved ones described 35-year-old Heather Kelly as an outgoing, down-to-earth woman who cared deeply about her kids. The Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office says in December 2022, she left her home around 9 p.m. About an hour and a half later, Kelly called her children to let them know she would be home shortly, only to never return. Two months later, investigators declared Kelly's disappearance a homicide based on evidence they found, which reportedly included blood in the backseat of her car that KCSO found abandoned and burned in the area of Sprinkle Road near Comstock Township. At the time, the sheriff's office said they took a person of interest into custody. Investigators declined to name them. However, federal court records identify Carlos Watts Jr. as that individual. Those documents alleged while on parole at the Kalamazoo Zoo Probation Enhancement Program. His ankle monitor went offline for eight hours the night Kelly vanished. Then, two days later, in the morning after police questioned him, Watts allegedly took scissors from a desk at the halfway house and used them to cut off the electronic tether. Records added, analysts found his DNA on clothing by her car. Investigators eventually arrested Watts at a house in Battle Creek and charged him with felony escape. Watts pleaded guilty in July, and on Friday, he said to be sentenced in a memorandum filed ahead of that on Monday, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Michigan rejected claims made by Watts in recently written letters to the court that said he ran away because of threats from Kelly's brother. Federal prosecutors instead argued Watts did so to escape prosecution, writing in part, quote, defendant's escape from KPEP was not done to avoid harm from TK, but to avoid the ensuing police investigation. Defendant was escaping criminal liability for murder. Defendant had alternative legal options other than escape if he did feel threatened by TK. All right, uh, let's uh, head to the uh, press conference now, Kalamazoo County. Prosecuting Attorney Jeff Getting is holding that conference. Let's watch. Good morning. Thank you all for joining me here. Um, welcome to the Pratt Justice Center. Uh, the facilities here are fantastic. The community should be really proud of, of the building that we have to serve uh, them. My name is Jeff Getting. I'm the Kalamazoo County Prosecuting Attorney. Uh, thank you for joining us as we discuss an update in the Heather Kelly case. As you're all aware, Heather Kelly was last seen on December 11, 2022. Since that time, there has been an ongoing intensive investigation involving multiple agencies and multiple persons within those agencies. I want to specifically point out here with us today um, the Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Rick Fuller, Lieutenant Jim Sandlin, and Detective Meisner. From the Portage Department of Public Safety, Chief Director of Public Safety Nicholas Armold, Lieutenant Ron Clark, and Detective Jim Lord are with us. This investigation has involved not only our local authorities, but federal authorities as well. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has been actively involved in this from the FBI, Peter Ellis, the resident agent in charge, and special agent Jeff Buttery are here. Not with us, but certainly I need to thank uh, for their involvement in this investigation as well is the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Michigan, um, U.S. Attorney Mark Totten and his staff, 
have been instrumental in moving this investigation forward. Last and certainly not least, from my office, from the Kalamazoo County Prosecutor's Office, has been Senior Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Chelsea Huber, who is with us and has been involved in this case since its onset, working with and providing advice and assistance uh, to all of these investigators. As I said, as you know, Heather Kelly was last seen December 11, 2022. We have reached a point in this investigation where we're going to take the next step. That means criminal charges. We have this morning charged Carlos Vance Watts Jr. with the offense of murder for causing the death of Heather Kelly. That charge of open murder carries with it the possibility of a sentence of life without parole if convicted of first degree murder. If convicted of second degree murder, the consequence could be up to life in prison with the possibility of parole or any number of years. Mr. Watts currently is in federal custody. He has been in federal custody since the time of this murder. He is scheduled for sentencing by the federal authorities this Friday, January 12th. These charges will allow for an orderly transfer from federal custody to state custody of Mr. Watts after that sentencing occurs. He will remain in federal custody until that time, until the federal authorities have completed that hearing. I anticipate that state authorities will be available and they have already worked with the federal marshals to make sure that there is an orderly transfer of Mr. Watts to our custody so that he can face charges. The next step in that process will be an arraignment in front of an 8th District Court judge after he is transferred to state custody. That arraignment has not yet been scheduled because he's still with the feds. At that arraignment, he'll be informed of his charges. An attorney will be appointed if he has not hired one to represent him. Bond will be set in his case, and then further court proceedings will be scheduled by the 8th District Court, starting with a probable cause conference for approximately, at approximately one week after his arraignment, and then a preliminary hearing which will initially be scheduled within 14 days of his arraignment, but is likely to be adjourned to give everyone an opportunity to properly prepare for that hearing. I'm certain that you will have lots of questions about the case. I want to inform you that I will not be discussing any of the evidence in the case. I'm specifically prohibited ethically from doing that. Um, I will tell you this with regard to the evidence, Heather Kelly's remains have not been recovered. We are moving forward with the charges in spite of that. This is an ongoing investigation. There's been thousands of hours spent by the Sheriff's Department, the Porter's Department of Public Safety, our federal counterparts already in this investigation. And we anticipate that there will be thousands more between now and a trial on these charges. In the meantime, I would remind everyone, if you have any information regarding this case, please contact the authorities. Specifically, you can contact Silent Observer at any time. There remains a reward that is outstanding for information leading to uh, the recovery of Heather's remains. Prior to us discussing this here, Publicly, I met with the victim's family this morning to inform them that we were moving forward with charges. They asked me to express their gratitude on behalf of and their thanks to all of the investigators that have been involved in this case. They've specifically asked that the media respect their privacy moving forward in this case. Um, they know that we have a lot more work to do and they're prepared to help us in any way that they can with this, including not discussing the case publicly. 
I would remind everybody that charges, in this case specifically the charge of murder, is merely an accusation. The defendant remains innocent until his guilt is proven in a court of law. With that, I'd ask if you have any questions, and again caution you that I can't discuss this evidence in any sort of specific way. Go ahead. I'll shoot for a question. If you can't answer it, you might hurt my feelings. Um, is Sprinkle Road still a location of interest, or do you have other locations that are being searched right now? The police have searched multiple locations during the course of this investigation. Um, including that area as well as other areas. As I said, we have not recovered Heather's remains, so everything remains open in terms of where our investigation may take us uh, in that area. If applicable, what additional areas have been searched uh, that, that your office has been informed of where her remains could be found, if not already? those existing areas. I'm not going to go into any details about the investigation that haven't already been made public. Um, as I said, there will be a preliminary examination scheduled in this case. The preliminary examination is a hearing where the prosecutor's office has to show the judge, the court, that we have sufficient information for this case to move forward, specifically that uh, if evidence from which the court can, can conclude that there is probable cause to believe that a murder was committed and that Mr. Watts is guilty of that crime. If you can. Okay, well, there you have it, the uh, breaking news this morning, Carlos Watts Jr., the uh, boyfriend of the victim in this case, arrested, and he will face charges in state court in the state of Michigan. Let's bring in Krista Ramey, trial attorney in Los Angeles, and he was in the federal system. It's going to be sentenced today. It sounds like uh, they, they, they had a nice little time frame here. They gave them time. He was in custody. There was no need for a quick arrest. But this is a no-body prosecution, and no-body prosecutions have some inherent difficulties, though, do they not? They do, but I, I feel like that there's been a lot of them recently, right? Um, we've got one that we're following in Connecticut right now as well. Um, I, I think that, you know, here you have some pretty significant, overwhelming evidence that one, she's, she is dead um, because of, uh, of, you know, finding her vehicle burned out with her blood and hair in it. Uh, it, you know, so you had, you know, going missing with eight children who's, who all, you know, have claimed that she was very devoted to. Um, mothers of eight don't just up and leave their kids behind. So I think that the evidence is pretty overwhelming, one, that she is dead. And the timeline pretty well establishes that, you know, that Watts is the, is the guy. So I, you know, I was wondering why it took so long, but you know, you have to get all that cooperating evidence and piece it all together. And I think that that's just, you know, how long it's taken and they could take their time and do it right because he was in custody this whole time. Yeah, that's a real luxury, is it not, for the state because, you know, had, yeah. if he was free, you want him off the streets ASAP. This way it does build your case, gives you that time to go through everything. And it seems as though that's what they've done, by the way, that this press conference was conducted. Yeah, it does. And and you've got, you know, you do have all this evidence from the very beginning, but you've got, a, you know, it was a pretty mild press conference. It was very calm. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, um, he, he, you know, he did lay it out. And I think that, you know, I think that they have the goods and, you know, we'll see, you know, what happens and how this unfolds. But, you know, you, you've got Watts, you know, taking off his tether, or cutting off his tether, but you've got them electronically together at some points throughout the day. Um, him lying about when the last time he was, he saw her. You know, you've got evidence that really keeps them together um, through most of the day and evening. So it it is, it's going to be, you know, him coming back with like deep scratches into his back and chest. So I think that um, they're, the goods have are there and we'll uh, see how it plays out. Yeah, it seems like a very obvious story that jurors will follow very easily and um, that uh, this decision was, was um, a good one. And the fact that they had that luxury is, is, is big because he was in custody, no need to rush it. Breaking news is Carlos Watts Jr. in custody, or he's already in custody, now facing state charges um, for that murder.